Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 4, Lesson 4, Defining Our Game Loop. This lesson's going to be a little bit different because we skipped a critical part of creating this game at the beginning. We never actually defined how the gameplay of our game should work, and I think this is a very important step in game development that is often overlooked until way too late in the development. So I wanted to take this lesson to just stop for a minute and talk through how our game should work. And we're gonna do this by defining the game loop of our game. And I find a lot of times creating a diagram is the best way to define your game loop. And I usually do this by creating a start point, defining the lose condition, and then defining the end condition, and then filling in all of the blanks. So here's the game loop that I'm proposing. Now, you don't have to follow this one exactly, but the steps here are gonna take up the content for the rest of this week. So I recommend you at least loosely follow for the rest of the week so you don't get too far off track from the curriculum that I'm going through. So in this diagram, I have a start point. And upon start, we're also gonna have a timer that starts to click down. And this timer is going to be the lose condition of our game. So if the player cannot escape before the timer runs out, they will lose. And this is gonna be defined in lesson eight of this week. Now, in our level, we have two houses and we have a gate. So I've blocked each of these out in this diagram as well. The ultimate goal is to unlock the gate in under five minutes so the player can escape, and this is the win condition. But the gate is locked at the beginning. House two will also be locked, which means the player needs to find a way to unlock it in house one. In house one, we'll have a puzzle that the player will need to solve in order to unlock house two. And this is gonna be defined in lesson six. When the player gets into house two, they're gonna flip the breaker to unlock the gate, but this will also lock the player inside house two. And the player is going to need to solve another puzzle in order to escape house two. This will be defined in lesson five, which is the next lesson. And then in lesson seven, we're gonna go through the steps for setting up the gate so the player can get close to the gate and unlock it and escape from the level. So this is kind of the breakdown of the remainder of this week. In lesson five, we're gonna create the house two puzzle, which I'm calling light puzzle. In lesson six, we're gonna create the house one puzzle, which I'm calling the hatch puzzle. In lesson seven, we're gonna go over unlocking the gate using triggers. In lesson eight, will create the losing condition, which is going to be a gameplay timer that ticks down over time while the player is playing. In lesson nine, we'll create some menus for our player to interact with when they launch the game. And then in lesson 10, we'll wrap everything up and go over everything we've covered in the last two weeks. Now, I do think there will be some valuable lessons for the remainder of this week, and we will continue to learn a few new concepts but mostly we're gonna be applying what we've learned so far. There will be a lot more challenges for the remainder of this week, and I would like to encourage you to really attempt each of the challenges on your own before watching my implementation. This is a key part of becoming a more self-reliant game developer, and we want to break out of that tutorial loop. So when you're ready to get started, I'll see you in the next lesson.